Tennessee Whiskey by Chris Stapleton. I'm going to teach this as a two chord song and we have an option to use either a bar chord as one of the chords or we can use a capo which will eradicate the bar chords but still mean that you can play along to the original recording. Now the two chords that make this song regardless of the capo are the A major and a B minor. When I play those two chords, I would use the first finger as a bar, playing strings two, three, and four only, but trying to keep string one ringing out by kinking that first finger like this. It just requires a little press down and a little kink, and all five strings can ring out great, and then we move to the B minor bar chord. And if anything, therefore, that B minor bar chord just varies it a little bit so that they're both nice and easy to play. If that is something that's not at your level yet, it's totally fine. We can use a capo at the second fret, so the capo is barring those strings for us, and we're gonna play just a normal G major to an A minor chord. And those are the only two chords you would need to know to play this song. And a good thing to know, therefore, is the G major with a capo at the second fret has moved that G major two frets higher up the uh, guitar neck, so two notes higher in the notes we have available. So we've gone from G, first fret would be G sharp, second fret is an A. The G chord sounds like an A. And the B minor's moved up two frets as well, so that sounds like a B minor. And if you look at that, that would be our B minor but we don't need to use that first finger and we can play it like this. Whichever version you're going for, the rhythm's really crucial in this song. So I'm gonna keep my capo here just to demo, but you can play whichever version you prefer. You can take the capo off and use just the A major chord and the B minor if you wish. But whichever version, we have a strumming pattern where every beat is divided into three measures, which we would count one and a two and a three and a four and a. It kind of sounds like waltz time, but we're just strumming three times per beat is the main thing. That would happen once on the G chord or the first chord that you play. Then the second chord, it would happen twice. So a little bit longer. One and a two and a three and a four. And again, one and a two and a three and a four and back to once on the G and then the whole thing repeats again and that's the whole sequence. Now you may have noticed I'm playing the beat a little bit louder and the other one's quieter. The main focus there is to have the other strums that aren't on the beat quieter. So the and a, ah, one is a normal strum and a ah is much quieter and just kind of strumming the middle strings rather than the thinner ones. One and a, ah, two and a, ah, three two, and a three, and a four, and again on the B minor, I'll demo with a capo in a second. And with the capo, one second, I love these trigger type capos, which are like that, because you can put them on really quick, and they sound really great. This is three and a four. Four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one two three and a four and a one. And that is just a sequence that can be repeated throughout the entire song. So why therefore wouldn't we use a capo? Um, if you do have the option to use a capo, why would you choose to play harder chords? Well, the guitar riff in this particular song, we need to not have the capo on to give us access to that lower note. Otherwise, with the capo second fret, we can't play the open E. That riff is, Open to second fret on the thickest string. Open string five, the A string. Slide to the fourth fret. One, two, three, 
fall. Slide to that fourth fret again. So it's a slide to the fourth fret, second fret, open, four, two. Four, two, zero, four, two. But we're sliding to the fourth fret, if possible. Without. This bit's a little harder, and I'd recommend we do it with the third finger supported with the middle finger. That was a slide three times. Four times, actually. To the fourth fret, and then back to the first fret. Finally, to the A. So that is one reason to have a go at this song without using a capo, but if you still at the capo stage, that's totally fine. It gives you the freedom to learn more songs and it still sounds really great. That's the end of this tutorial. I hope you check out more of my two and three chord song tutorials. Leave any requests in the comments on YouTube or get in touch via the website. And I hope to see you again. Bye for now.